Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, these are a few of the techniques and ways that I used to make money as a teenager. Um, I'm 21 at the moment, so you know it wasn't that long ago. These these techniques and things are still pretty up to date, and they will you know more than definitely work for you if you use them to your advantage. Uh, I want to share this with you guys, um, so let's get straight into it. Um, so the first thing I want to um, discuss uh, what you can do to make money is to find cheap uh, items that you can sell at a higher profit. Now this is usually called item flipping, um, and to do this, you know, you can you know you can sell these products, um, you know, to your friends in school, to family members. Uh, you can advertise on eBay, Facebook groups, and things like that, and you can either you know deliver or have people come and pick up, um, or use postal services, and um, depending on how confident you are with all that. But the way to find these cheaper items is, you know, always look um, for any sales in stores. You know, if anything comes up, you know, any children's toys or anything like that, and it says, you know, they have a 50% sale on, you know, jump on that. You know, compare the, the price that they're selling it for 50%. Always jump on that and compare it with other websites to make sure that it is really 50%. And if you know if, if there's like ten pound off or ten dollars off or something, that ten dollars uh, could be yours. You know, you could sell it at a dollar or a pound cheaper than what other websites are selling it for, and you will guarantee more sales this way. So always look for any sales and, and make sure you jump on that and use that to your advantage. Um, and another way is you know be frugal. Always try and get items for the cheapest way you can. So if you have any coupon co codes or, or you know you can get them from like the paper or anything like that to, to use at stores, then definitely go and do that and uh, you know pick up these items as cheap as you can to, to sell them because the cheaper you pick them up, the higher your profit's going to be. Um, so yeah, always sort of look for ways which you can save money on those stores and buy buy the items in bulk. Because the more you buy, they usually offer um, some more discount for buying more items, especially on online websites uh, like AliExpress and things like that. If you do buy your items from there, um, another another uh, tip for finding cheaper items is to check the smaller stores. So you know, you go to a big store like a Walmart or something like that. Them sort of um, supermarkets, they have a high profit margin, so they will buy them cheap um, because they can afford to buy them in higher bulk. Um, and they will sell them for a higher profit margin. So if you check out some of the, the smaller stores that you know people sort of haven't heard of, like the corner stores and things like that, you'll often find that they're much cheaper in there. Um, so yeah, you know, check out AliExpress and things like that. I didn't have that one here, but um, check out sites like that where you can buy them in bulk um, and, and you know sell little gadgets and things to your friends at, at, you know, at, a, at a higher profit. Um, so that's a main way that I used to do it quite a lot. I used to sell things in school. Um, in college and things like that um, and you know you can get some pretty high profit margins for that um, there's plenty of videos on there um, on, on items you can use it's all about finding your right niche um, so the second way I want to talk about in which you can make money is uh, repairing electronics so you know these days people are getting more dependent on electronics um, Everybody has, you know, a smartphone. Everybody has a, a laptop or, or a tablet or something like that. Uh, I've actually got a couple behind me there. And I'm actually doing this now, but you can do this as a teenager. Um, and the way I learned how to do this um, was not through, you know, any sort of qualification or skills or anything like that. It was basically by watching YouTube videos. If you sit there and you watch a YouTube video and you watch enough of them, you will learn how to do these things, you know, um, very easily. I'm actually just going to show you here. I have an iPad Air, um, an iPad Air 2, which, you know, it's got a faulty screen. I bought this screen online and this cost me around $8 and I'm charging the client to, to just put this screen on this iPad. I'm charging them $60 to do that and you know that's what $52 profit and a lot of shops and things like that that repair electronics they you know they they do charge a lot higher than that they can charge $100 and and people need these sort of repairs because of how reliant they are on their electronics. So always tap into that and, you know, watch these videos and teach yourself how to do that. You know, so as I mentioned, they check YouTube videos. People rely on things such as laptops, phones and tablets. Um, and a lot of uh, laptop repairs are easy. Um, you know, you can swap hard drives out, you can reinstall operating systems. But it doesn't even have to be hardware um, repairs. It can actually just be software things. So you can offer things... 
um, like you know simple cleanups you can do a cleanup on someone's laptop you know just uninstall a load of spyware or, or install an antivirus there's plenty of free antivirus softwares out there such as Avast and AVG and things like that um, which you know have free versions you can install them on, on people's laptops and you can charge you know twenty thirty dollars just for installing an antivirus on their system and you can use this because a lot of people don't know how to do this and if you don't yourself then like you say just check a YouTube video there's plenty of them out there um, and you know I know I mentioned about the the iPad there I'm doing a screen repair but there's you don't just think about screen repairs there's also you know there's so many different components that you can repair on these devices there's cameras there's buttons there's sensors there's there's all kinds of things that you can uh, you can definitely repair so definitely make some money on repairing these type of devices um, and, and teach yourself how to do this um, and you can definitely tap into that market. Now my next point is sort of following on from that and that's to buy faulty electronics. So if you do learn how to successfully you know, repair these devices, repair laptops, repair um, iPads and things like that, then buy them on, on the likes of eBay, you know, buy faulty ones. So you may find people will sell these products on eBay a lot cheaper because they have like a crack in the screen or a, a broken button or something like that you know you can buy them at this cheap price you can repair it for free because obviously you're doing it yourself and then you can sell this at the price that you know people are selling fully working devices so that's always a great way um, if you, you know if you can't repair these yourself then just check in with your local repair shops I'm sure there's a ton of them around um, and the best part about this is you can often negotiate your price with these repair shops. So, you know, if, if one's charging $50, you, you can often say, oh, well, I know someone who can do it for 40 and they will most likely meet that price and come down in price for you. So and always negotiate your price with these people. And then once you've checked local repair shops and you, you know, you know how much it'll cost, for example, if I see a iPad on um, eBay and it's going for hundred dollars because it's got a broken screen but I know I can sell it for 200 if it was working but I know the repair shops only gonna charge me forty dollars to repair it then I'm gonna go buy that iPad for a hundred dollars I'm gonna take it to the repair shop and get it repaired for 40 and I'm gonna sell it for 200 and I'm gonna make sixty dollars profit so always check repair shops prices before you buy a faulty item um, unless of course you do uh, intend to repair it yourself now, another way is, um, you know, when people are selling faulty electronics online, they often don't check to see if there's a, even any warranty on the device. So what I tend to do is if I see a, a faulty phone online, I will go and ask for the serial number of that phone. Um, and when they send that you in, in a message, you can go online and you can check if that phone has any warranty. If it does have warranty, check if that covers any sort of screen damage or anything like that. Because if it does, you can pick up that phone at a really cheap price. You can go and get that repaired on a warranty free of charge and you can sell that at full price or, or you know, just have the phone um, at a discounted price. So uh, the next uh, way I'm going to talk which you can make money online uh, as, as a young teenager is social media management. Now I'm not talking sort of uh, social media promotions or anything like that. I'm not you know, saying go into Facebook ads uh, if you're not comfortable with that. But you can go to these smaller stores. Um, you know, don't bother going to bigger stores because they're probably paying uh, agencies to do the likes of this. Uh, excuse me. But... Um, if you go to smaller stores like corner shops or um, you know hair salons or things like that, you know things that aren't really widely known, and you approach them and you you tell them that you can promote their their business, then they're gonna choose you. And the first thing you want to do because you're a teenager, you probably have quite a high friendship circle. Promote that business to your friends straight away, um, and you know get cheap business cards made up and leaflets. So you know. If you're if you if you're getting taken on for a job to promote a business and you're only charging you know eighty hundred dollars per month to promote that business, then you are a lot cheaper than some of the the bigger agencies. You know they're charging four hundred dollars per month, so you're undercutting them straight away. They're gonna choose you, and all you have to do is get some cheap business cards or leaflets made up on on sites like Vistaprint, get them delivered to your home address. And just go and drop them through people's letterboxes um, and, and, you know, leave them in stores for people to pick up and things like that. And you're promoting that business straight away. And, you know, it's cost you, you can get these business cards online for around $4, $5. 
Um, so, you know, the, it's just cost you a bit of your time other than that. Another way to, you know, sort of promote them is to manage their social media. So um, take photos of the business, you know, any new upcoming sales they've got or discounts, put that on their Facebook page, put that on their Instagram, create them Instagram accounts if they don't have them. Um, and just make sure you're always posting and keeping, you know, people up to date. Um, and make sure they've got signs up in their store um, to, you know, to get people to follow that social media account. Um, so they will always see your, your offers and things like that. And um, another way which I haven't actually put on here um, is to get the owner of the store to do offers and deals that they will only have um, for their online um, followers. So for example, they can put a discount code on their Facebook group, um, which they can use in store, but only people can see that or people who are members of the Facebook group. That's a great way to gain a following on there and you know advertise their business. Um, obviously, Again, I mentioned this before, as you have no overheads because you're young and you're not an agency, you can always negotiate your cost. You know, if you come at a business and you say, I want to charge $100 per month to do this for you, and they say no, then, you know, drop that down, go to 80, go to 60, um, you know, obviously don't go too low, but as, you know, as long as you, you don't have the overheads and you don't have um, staff to pay and things like that to do this, you can always negotiate your costs and bring them down, which they will, you know, they're going to prefer to choose you being able to do that over an agency. Um, so the next way I want to talk about is probably the most known way and the best way. Um, and it's to you know just do odd jobs for people. So again, get yourself some business cards, go on Vistaprint, post them through people's letterbox and just you know advertise services that you'll do in your local area. So for example, you can mow people's lawns for five dollars, you know, um, you know, you, you get a, a fair few people built up who you can mow their lawn. Then you're you're gonna get a, you know a recurring monthly income. You can do that on a weekly basis, on a two weekly basis, um, and and it's not just mowing lawns. There's things like you can wash people's cars, um, wash their windows. You can do some uh, odd garden work, such as you know planting um, their plants or cutting trees down or things like that. As long as obviously they aren't too big, um, and all this isn't going to cost you anything, and people will pay you to do it. Um, you know, another one is walk people's dogs. You can post some cards or just knock on people's doors. You know, if you don't want to go and get some business cards made up, knock on people's doors and just say, you know, I, I noticed you got some dogs. I, I'll walk your dogs for you. I only charge five, you know, five dollars for an hour or something like that. Um, or any of these services, you know, just advertise it to people. Um, if you see they have, you know, long, lo overgrown lawns or un unwashed cars and things like that. Um, you know, just just knock on on at the door and just let them know what you're offering. Um, all they can say is no, and, and then you just walk away. You haven't lost anything, so it's definitely worth advertising these services. Also, you know, tell your friends, get your family to tell their friends. Um, go on Facebook and advertise in your local area and things like that. And again, there's the uh, the other option I mentioned, which is just to get some Vista print cards printed and you know advertise as much as you can. Um, the next way um, is to get, you know, you because you're a young teenager, you'll have a lot more experience on, on things like technology um, than, you know, the older generation will. So you can use this to, to do digital services for people. So, for example, if people are creating YouTube content, but, you know, they're not getting custom thumbnails, you can create a thumbnail. You can use, like, PowerPoint or Word or some sort of online publisher to, you know, create these thumbnails. And you can then, you know, charge people per thumbnail, you know, $5 per thumbnail. And if you do need to advertise, um, you know, to create thumbnails, then go on sites such as Fiverr or create, you know, Facebook um, groups for, for YouTube creators and things like that. And just say, you know, hey, I'll, I'll create thumbnails for you for like $3, $4 per thumbnail. Um, they can sort of let you know how they want it and you can, you know, get, get a free site to do that. Another way is to edit their videos. So if you um, have some sort of video editing software, which you know most people do, there's, there's some free ones out there as well. People aren't comfortable in using this software. They don't really know how to use it. And you can go on YouTube, you can teach yourself how to use this software, and then you can charge people to edit their videos or, you know, it doesn't even have to be YouTube videos. This could be videos promoting products and things like that. You can, have, you can edit these videos for them. They will pay you. Again, advertise yourself uh, on, on sites like Fiverr and things, and you will get you know people wanting to buy your, your services. 
Uh, another thing you can create for people is channel art uh, or banners or anything like that, advertisement banners, um, which can go on their website or, or their YouTube channel or anything like that. So always make sure that you know you, you offer these services. You can, again, just advertise on, on Facebook and Fiverr. It doesn't have to be through word of mouth. It can be on these sort of free sites, uh, which will allow you to advertise those services. So yeah, always advertise those services. The next step, uh, the next uh, way I want to share with you is to be a delivery driver. Now, of course, this um, does mean you will need your own car. Um, and over here in the UK, you will have to be 17 or older to do this. Um, in the US, I believe it's 16 to drive a car. Um, so, you know, you don't even have to have your own car as long as you've got, you know, a parent's car that, you know, will lend you their car. You could be a, a delivery driver. So this is a great way to earn money and a lot of people do it. Um, so check the local pizza stores and things like that. You know, people who do, do delivery and um, just you know, they may not be advertising for a delivery driver, but just always go in and just ask if they need any more or if they need any help or you can pick up some shifts and things like that. And you will often find that they're usually quite willing to work with you and, and, and offer you a job and offer you some time. Now, the best part about it is not even so much the money that you will earn from being the delivery driver. It's just that you can get um, a lot of tips. Now, um, when you deliver a pizza, you know, in a, in a fast time or you give great service at the door, you have a great personality, they will often tip you and, and those tips are completely yours to keep that, you know, they're tax free. So you can make high, t high gains in your tips from the service as well. Now, another benefit of being a delivery driver is you get to pick your own hours, you know, you work when you want, you can say, oh, I can't do tonight, I'm busy, things like that. Um, and you, you can always, when you, when you are becoming a delivery driver, always negotiate your fuel costs. Now, some some stores won't pay for your fuel, and they say you know that's down to you to pay for. Now, I don't agree with that. I think if you're using your fuel to to do them a service, whether they're paying you or not, they should be paying your fuel also. So always negotiate and make sure you get you know you say your your fuel costs you this much. Um, rather than just taking what they offer you because you will often find that if you negotiate your fuel cost they will give you more um, because you know diff cars are different depending on the size engine and things like that on how much fuel they will use for a certain journey. Um, another benefit of doing this is you know you're in your own car you get to listen to your own music you can even have a friend with you for the ride they can sit in the passenger seat and things like that and uh, you know be with you if you're up to you throughout the duration of your shift as well and um, so that's pretty much it for this video guys i hope some of these uh these techniques you know you're you are going to go ahead and use um and i hope they have helped you a bit um mm. you know the the ways in which you don't have to really spend any money you don't need to, you know to tie, hold down a job or anything like that um, and you can do these on the side along with any other income you're making um, I would hope that you can uh, like this video if it did help you post any other techniques that you have um, down in the comments and you know help people out let people know what you're up to um, and whether any of these ways did work for you um, I know they worked for me when I was growing up and I hope you can subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos thank you very much